Good morning. Today we're in Skagway, Alaska. Uh, it's, uh, it's a small town. It's only got like 1,200 folks year-round. I think that doubles during the summer to accommodate the million or so of cruise passengers that come through here. I love it because you pull up and you just see mountains and water and streams and you can't even see a town and there's no Diamonds International in your face. <laughs> Which, <laughs> if you know cruising, that's a big deal. <laughs> this morning in Skagway, there's the Norwegian Escape the Royal Princess, and the Holland America, New Amsterdam, in addition to our Celebrity Millennium. Walking into town, into Skagway, I love the rugged feel of it, whereas it's not this huge port that they just created, that it's just still, you feel like you're in right, Alaska. No Diamonds International and Del Sol, etc. Trying to take a walking path into town. Our little port feels real industrial. Beautiful. It's just way warmer than I was expecting. It's crazy warm. Isabella and I are in downtown Skagway. She's got some homework due. Uh, for her class, so we're going to get her set up in the library right around the corner here. They've probably got better, or they should have a lot better Wi Fi than the ship does. Skagway is only eight miles from the Canadian border to the east. All right, we got Isabella set up to work on her homework. We'll check on her in a little bit. We don't have an excursion planned today, really. I think we were just going to try to take it easy. So we got Isabella set up at the library. I'm going to try to catch up with Melissa and Brennan here on Broadway and, uh, and kind of see uh, what's in store. It's a neat little town. Uh, it looks like uh, it, it, uh, looks like it's 100 years old. So it's really, really cool. Hey, so we're on Broadway, which is the th main thoroughfare in Skagway. Just checking things out. It's so beautiful. It feels like they're trying to keep it looking like a old gold mining town surrounded by mountains. Beautiful. We have stopped in at Bites on Broadway. It's a little coffee shop and a little place where you can get a little bite to eat. Um, look for Niles and Skip and it's wonderful. We're waiting for something to drink. Well, I ride on a mail train made hang by a thrill. Well, I've been up all night leaning on the windowsills. And if I die on top of the hill, now if I don't make it, you know my baby.
Molly had a wonderlust. <laughs> she was like us. Was that the whole yeah, murder thing? Oh, she got murdered? So we were told if you walk down State Street to the very end, you'll get to a cemetery, and then you take a dirt road to a waterfall. And it's like 80 degrees. It feels yeah. like we've been walking for hours. It's beautiful if it wasn't so hot. I mean, I'm like sweating in Alaska. Yeah, it's crazy. It's not the brisk weather we were hoping for. <laughs> At all. And, uh, and I hope we make it back to the ship on time, because I don't really want to walk that far back. We had three hours, we're fine. <laughs> Just a guess, but I'm gonna say that used to be up there. Check this out. So it's a snow crawler. We wouldn't have seen this if we hadn't walked so freaking far, but that's pretty cool. So we've heard a lot about Silky Smith. It's kind of a rundown of what happened to Soapy Smith and he and Frank Reed. Yeah, they hashed out and killed each other. And both okay, are buried here at Gold Rush Cemetery. Alright, here's the trail. It takes us to Reed Falls. I'm gonna fold myself over these roots. Oh, it's so much cooler here in the shade. Uh, I'm glad we got a chance to explore some of this. I really feel like we're in the in the woods a little bit. Certainly in the shade, it's nice. Skagway. Uh, we had an unexpectedly long walk, uh, but a really neat experience. We didn't have any kind of excursion planned, uh, but we got to see a waterfall and, uh, and, and really a lot, experience a lot of the, 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 the town of Skagway. So um, it, it was fun. It was really, really a beautiful area. I know I've said that a lot, but, but I, I don't know how else to put it. It's just super uh, amazing here. Um, so Melissa and Brennan decided to walk. That's them right there. And never ever melts. And it's in the June of Icefield, for example, where we were yesterday, it can snow a hundred feet every year. It's hard to imagine. 
And when it begins to get as deep as 200 feet, what happens is it begins to compact with an absolute amazing density. And it, it develops a, a, a consistency that geologists and scientists call FIRN, F-I-R-N, and it begins to push out all the oxygen and it begins to get very, very heavy. When it gets heavy enough, then that am amazing weight, because remember it's coming from the world's high elevations, it begins to move slowly, gravity and weight begins to take it to the sea. And it doesn't matter if you're in Chile, Norway, Alaska, or Antarctica, this is how glaciers are made. And that is what is going to happen tomorrow at Hubbard Glacier. Now we will be sailing in, and this will just give you a little bit of view of what it looked like as we are going in to the glacier tomorrow. And this mountain here is called Mount St. Elias. I'll talk to you about that in a moment. And this is the mountain range that we're we'll going into tomorrow as we go in. If you were flying over hypothetically at the time of the last ice age, and you could fly over, which we couldn't at that time, you would see these little peaks sticking up. They just didn't get carved off yet. And so that's very, very significant in the making of glaciers and the lands that surround them. When a glacier, when the, the salt water meets the fresh water of the glacier, the salt in the water begins to interact with the face of the glacier, and ultimately the glacier will calve. And calving does not necessarily mean global warming. I'll explain that in a moment. All glaciers calve, whether they're growing or whether they're receding. But once a glacier, when it first calves, that ice is so compact that it's pretty much blue. Because what happens is that ice, as it compacts from the snow from that elevation, when we get to the harbor tomorrow, the ice you're going to see at the front of the glacier is about 400 years old. It's old ice. It's from that far long ago. But what's happened is, as it comes down, it pushes out all of the oxygen and it absorbs all the colors of the spectrum except blue and it refracts or bounces back the blue. But let me tell you a story if you can can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We passed a glacier that you saw in Skagway today, but you didn't know what it was. Glacier we you wouldn't have seen it because it was it's a flat area between there is a glacier back over there. That, yeah. that, that one is Davidson Glacier. We passed that. We passed another one called Ferret Juno, Gaston on Channel, where we were yesterday. And and so you have to Now, we're coming up close onto a lighthouse up here, so get your cameras ready. I know I keep shooting the, the landscapes, but it's just resting. The Book in Wonderland's show, theater show, uh, was canceled due to technical difficulties. So we're just killing a little time uh, room for our uh, night and dining room appointment. Tonight is, uh, is uh, Lobster Tales, Meet Wellington. Look really looking forward to it. See if I get a side of risotto. Everything sounds so good. What sounds good, Isabel? There are lots of good choices tonight, such as the uh, lobster tail, the beef wellington, and duck a la orange. I think I'm going to get a lobster tail and a beef wellington, so I'm going to have to pass on the duck. But if I had more room in my stomach, I would get it too. <laughs> hey, Brennan, what do you think of the menu tonight? It's a menu. There's a lot of options on that. Mainly a piece of paper there. What do you think of the food listed on said menu? Yeah. 
Another ringing endorsement. <laughs> Brennan and Isabella got to take a risk. And I have the blue cheese souffle. How cool is this? While we're eating dinner, we can watch the whales like breach right there out the window. It's awesome. Just, just incredible. So we also got a salmon with it. We'll have to try that out. Greetings, bud. How do you like them? Medium. Thank you. Medium. Medium well. No. Medium well. Yeah. Interesting. It's good, though. It's good. Um, you definitely taste the salmon, and um, it's like a like a salmon salad. Like, Tuna salad for the salmon. I'll put you. What did you think of your tomato soup? Tomato bisque. Well, I finished it. Nice. It was good. I thought it was good. I did my bread in it. Nice. What about you? What did you think of your escargot? <laughs> Say it correct. Escargot. Buttery. buttery uh, lots of spices. And what did you think of your salmon? Uh, I liked it better than I thought it would. Uh, it was salmon-y. What about the other thing you had? Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. I'm glad I got it because now I can say I've tried it. The texture is very cake-like, so imagine a cheesecake, but not a cheesecake, like a cake made from blue cheese. Hmm. But it's good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so we Are you waiting for me? Oh, yeah. And the waiter can. Let me Sure. One moment, huh? Let okay. Me start this first. What happened to yours? I, I was trying to <laughs> get it out of the shell. <laughs> He's, he's pretty skilled at it. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this lobster tail is cooked perfectly. The waiter shelled it for us. It's outstanding. Look at this beautiful beef wellington. We each got one. Brennan and I both got the baked Alaska. After a great day, we were looking at Skagway, had an enjoyable dinner after work. Uh, now it's pretty late, and we've got an early day tomorrow to watch the Harvard uh, Glacier. Really looking forward to that. See you then.